So welcome to our presentation. Um, hope you guys had a very nice morning. Um, very interesting keynote there. We're going to talk about um, large-scale batch processing with um, Argo workflow and events. Um, myself, Rakesh, um, I work as a backend engineer in Intuit's data processing organization. And I have with me a co-presenter, uh, Bala. Um, he's the MVP. Um, he's the uh, core contributor and developer of Argo workflow. So um, give him a good shout out. So you guys can bug him with a lot of questions. So <laughs> right after the um, presentation. So in this presentation, we'll be covering Intuit's background, um, overview of batch processing platform, um, the use case, why we built it, um, architecture, and how it integrates with um, Argo workflow and Argo events. Following that, we'll talk about um, the scaling challenges, uh, the scalability journey that we went through, and the efforts that went into um, getting it to production scale. Um, and we'll wrap up the presentation with a quick demo um, and what's next, um, that what's coming next in the, um, the Argo events and workflow and what's cooking. So um, before we get into the presentation, a quick shout out to um, what Intuit does. Intuit, as you guys are aware of, is a global technology platform um, that helps um, customers achieve financial confidence. We have over 100 million customers um, in the, uh, across the world 14,000 employees working really hard uh, to serve those customers. And uh, we are a, a strong um, open source contributor, uh, both in promoting and also um, uh, building open source projects and uh, getting it out there. So in this slide, um, <clears throat> we'll start with uh, the batch processing uh, platform overview, um, starting with um, um, some personas. Um, who's the target audience that we built the presentation for, um, uh, the platform for, and uh, uh, bef uh, so b before we deep dive, I wanted to briefly touch upon uh, some of the personas um, uh, that the pr processing platform helps with. Um, data engineer um, uh, who wants to focus on uh, transforming data rapidly so that they can aid um, their customers. A data scientist uh, who wants to uh, build ML models at a faster rate and make their applications more intelligent. And platform engineers um, who uh, wants to build data engineering applications uh, so that um, they can provide these applications to other uh, data personas uh, who can build um, better data processing models. So let's talk about, um, in this slide, we'll talk about the Intuit's data processing flow uh, for, from a very high level. Um, so Intuit has several customer-facing products um, with millions of users, um, be it small businesses, um, tax filing, and also um, for verifying your uh, financial health. Um, so between the products, um, before the uh, data, uh, with the data that we get, um, there are a lot of use cases um, that we serve with the data. Uh, we, we need data storage, real-time recommendations to the users, data enrichment, data curation, um, fraud detection. Um, so from the product lineup, before the data arrives in Intuit's data lake, um, we have uh, real-time um, uh, uh, transformations done using our stream processing platform. And once the data arrives in the data lake, um, we have uh, batch platforms uh, performing post-processing and analysis, um, which, uh, from which we'll get a reporting, model training, feature creation, and other um, <clears throat> uh, data that can be used for uh, real-time and semi-real-time feedbacks back to the products. So with that in mind, uh, we'll talk about um, the Intuit's batch processing requirements. From a platform standpoint, we wanted to build um, a company-wide solutioning uh, for scheduling and orchestration. A lot of the teams want to uh, have uh, data pipelines or um, applications running on a schedule, and uh, data are, is usually interconnected. So we wanted to provide um, dependency management um, for data pipelines and applications. Um, we wanted to provide a standardized runtime, runtime compute layer uh, for data and other processing use cases. Um, in Intuit's batch processing, we support uh, Spark and containerized application uh, runtimes uh, in multiple Kubernetes clusters that we manage. Um, we provide the seamless experience to the users to build data pipelines, build containerized applications, deploy them, and schedule them um, based on um, uh, different uh, dependencies. So Intuit manages 60,000 pipelines and 10,000 uh, concurrent pipelines run at any moment. Um, so the platform is also catered to solving a lot of engineering uh, problems. So the impact uh, this has is over 1,500 uh, engineers, um, including the personas that we talked about. Um, besides that, there's also other engineering personas that are impacted um, using this platform. OK. 
Okay. Um, the slide seems to be taking some time to load up. All right. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide. Um, so before um, uh, we talk about uh, how it integrates with Argo, I wanted to uh, quickly talk about the uh, the platform's architecture. This is a very high-level architecture, and we'll talk about like how um, we integrate uh, with Argo workflow and events um, for uh, the orchestration, which we'll specifically focus this um, presentation on. Um, so from the uh, the platform, uh, the platform has multiple different services. Um, I've highlighted a few here. Um, <clears throat> so we have uh, uh, the pipeline management service, uh, which helps with um, repository creation, um, uh, build environment deployments, uh, integration with artifact tree and observability. So from a data, um, uh, any uh, engineering uh, personas, what we expect is like uh, them to, out of the box, have the ability to uh, get their environment up and running. And then uh, we provide the capability uh, through a job orchestration service using the, uh, the workflow and the events layer uh, for scheduling their jobs and uh, creating dependencies. And we have namespace service to um, orchestrate their runs uh, on the compute layer uh, on the multiple Kubernetes clusters that we manage and notification services for um, uh, alerting and notification uh, through various mediums that we have. On the right, um, so we can see that uh, we have a representation of what we call as a pipeline. Um, so a pipeline um, uh, uh, is an abstract uh, which we uh, use for uh, calling um, a scheduling uh, and a compute layer. Uh, so basically a pipeline has a stack of process um, that with the data that is getting ingested and the data that is outputted. Each processor um, uh, is a code artifact um, and the processor does transformations on the incoming data and the pipeline manages the processing of this entire layer um, and the dependencies. So we'll get more clarity on these um, abstracts in the coming slides. So in this slide, like I put a quick uh, representation of um, how um, the stack uh, from a DAG on the left translates to Orgo and how we manage the uh, dependencies. So basically, um, so in the previous slide, we saw the, um, uh, the Intuit uh, processing flow with the, the real-time stream transformations and also the batch transformations. Um, so in the batch transformation, we can see that there is a DAG um, which is translated to um, pipeline dependencies uh, through workflows in Argo. So the, the root nodes here um, are, um, in this example, um, cron workflows uh, that are running on a schedule. And once the workflow um, is fired, uh, there is a downstream dependencies. So downstream dependencies usually uh, can be between data, uh, it can be between application layers, so it depends on your use case, but like usually um, we support a resource-based upstream dependencies between multiple pipelines. So these are independent um, pipelines uh, that are managed by different organizations, different teams in Intuit, um, and there are uh, downstream uh, that are depending on this data. Uh, maybe there is a data enrichment being done in step one, and then we want to uh, process and write the data to Hive in the next step, and then do post-processing and build reporting and uh, model analysis um, in the, the next step. So, uh, so we support two types of uh, pipeline dependencies. Primarily, um, a, a time-based dependency, which we support using uh, the cron workflows, and uh, trigger condition-based dependencies, which uh, we support using Argo, Event Source, and Sensor. Um, so, in this example, uh, the upstream and the downstream workflow, or um, like we uh, discussed earlier, is a pipeline uh, with multiple steps in it, and the dependency management is done uh, using uh, a Kafka Event Source that we have. Uh, built, uh, and uh, the sensor which takes care of the downstream triggers. So in this example, it's a one-to-one, -one, but we support one-to-many. This is also supported natively um, uh, in uh, uh, Argo events. So this just shows the um, capability that you can build uh, combining Argo workflow and events, a complete orchestration and a scheduling um, infrastructure um, for uh, all your uh, data pipelines. So in the next slide, um, I wanted to talk about the, uh, the scalability journey uh, that we uh, went through um, in terms of both scaling the Argo events and Argo workflows. And we'll, talk, uh, we'll take a, a quick look at like, what we have built internally at Intuit, like on top of uh, what Argo offers. And we'll talk about the, the next steps. So um, I put like different uh, 
uh, iterations that we went over um, in the architecture, specifically this um, slide targets how we scaled um, Argo events. Um, this targets both the stability aspect and also the, uh, the scalability aspect um, of this infrastructure. Um, so from the previous slide, we can see that uh, between two workflows, um, the internal dependencies uh, we manage through an event source and a sensor uh, that has an internal uh, NAT stream bus. Um, so the initial issue that we ran into with this um, architecture is that so uh, the event source, like we are, there are different types of sources uh, that the Argo events support, um, one including the workflows. Um, so the way we were orchestrating is the event source will listen to the upstream workflow completion and emit an event to the NAT stream, which will uh, then utilize the sensors for doing the downstream triggers. Um, but what happens during a critical failure? What if like um, an entire node goes down or an event source uh, completely uh, goes out? Um, in those scenarios, we fa face some issues with fault tolerance where like an upstream workflow completes, but an event is not captured because the event source went down. So during the initial journey, we migrated um, all of our event source uh, to, to Kafka. This is a natively supported feature um, in Argo events, um, which uh, meant that like we could turn down, um, uh, I mean, even if during critical failures, if the event source pods are unavailable, the data is still persisted in an intermediate queue. Um, and so this was the, the first step that we took about um, for uh, stabilizing this. Um, but there is still one um, um, uh, big um, uh, scalability uh, issue that we've uh, had. So with each of our pipeline dependency management, um, we are deploying um, the workflows, which takes up pods uh, from in your Kubernetes clusters. We are deploying the event source and sensors, which takes up more pods, so we are just adding up more pods for each uh, pipeline dependency management. So we were looking into solving um, the problem of uh, creating an independent event source per workflow. So uh, the good news is that we were able to collaborate um, with the, uh, the Argo events team, and um, so we uh, came up with a solution of uh, migrating to a Jetstream bus and a shared event source. So this is supported in the most recent versions of Argo events starting from 1.7.1 where you could utilize a single uh, uh, Kafka event source for all the upstream uh, shared uh, workflows. So we have reduced the uh, resource utilization on the event source by 99%, and uh, we have migrated to uh, the new Jetstream bus, which supports the capability for event source to rely on a single uh, event source event, and it can filter on uh, the data that's coming in uh, from the workflows. Um, so this is our current iteration, and in our target iteration, uh, we are working uh, on uh, moving the sensors uh, to a shared sensor model. So the, the target state is that for each Argo events namespace, which, we, which is the orchestration layer, we will have a single uh, compute stack uh, for the event source and the sensor, which will manage all the, um, the pipeline dependency management uh, for uh, tens of thousands of pipelines uh, that we manage every single day. Um, and the downstream triggers are handled by the, uh, the event source uh, compute layer. So there is an effort going internally uh, to migrate the, the event, so, uh, event sensors uh, and decouple the, the manifest and the uh, compute uh, so that we can scale uh, to the structure, which we'll be posting more about um, in the upcoming um, uh, Argo release notes. Now I'll hand off uh, to... Um, Bala uh, to talk about um, scaling Argo workflows. Thank you, Rakesh. Are you able to hear me? <clears throat> okay. So based on the, the, the batch processing platform requirement, we need a, like a 10,000 concurrent workflow has to be run. The, each pipeline will have like a three parts. That means 30,000 parts need to support. If you want to support this massive, massive workload, we cannot achieve with a single cluster. So we need to move into that multi-cluster architecture. So when we are thinking about the multi-cluster architecture, the one main requirement we got is like uh, the distribution need to be more dynamic, and it need to scale in the future. Based on that, we, we start designing like our uh, multi-cluster orchest orchestration service, which will distribute that work, load balance that workflow into that multiple clusters. And we leverage that Argo event to support that pipeline to pipeline dependency. When you see that the each node clusters, you can see that workflow controller, workflow APS server, and Argo event. 
the every API server will be registered into that or orchestration service so that the orchestration service will know that what are the clusters are registered so that it will schedule that pod into that each cluster in the dynamic way. So each, each cluster, when the workflow is completed, it will notify the status to that Argo event. Based on the dependency configuration, Argo event will notify back to that orchestration service to schedule the downstream workflow. This architecture, we are able to achieve like a one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many -many pipeline dependencies. To this journey, we open source some of the scaling feature into that Argo workflow also. The one feature we, we did like a HA on that workflow controller. Some of the heavy loaded environment, if you see that the scheduling a pod will take a time. In the BPP environment, most of the workflows are like a clone workflows. If the workflow controller is taking like a little bit time, the clone schedulers are missing. So we enabled that uh, HA using like a Kubernetes leader, leader, leader APIs. So that at the given time, there will be only one leader. And uh, rest of the people, rest of the nodes, rest of the pod will be a follower. Whenever there's any problem, the leader, immediately that follower will pick it up and uh, start working on that. The next feature, we, we enable like uh, the PDP support on the workflow pods. Whenever you have like a auto, frequent auto-scaling clusters, the node, the scale down will trigger the node drain, which will evict that the workflow parts, which will end up to that workflow step failure, or you need to rerun that again the entire step. To avoid this issue, we enable that pod disruption budget as a first class citizen for that workflow, so that every workflow will create a PDP for their workflow parts, and you, once the workflow is completed, the PDP object will be get deleted. This is the way we can prevent that pod eviction from the node drain. The third feature we, we, pro, uh, we implemented is like a rate limiting that concurrent pod because the every cluster will have like a some concurrent pod limitations. So we enable that uh, the rate limiting the concurrent pods in the multi levels. The user can configure in the cluster level so that the total cluster, if I want to Restrict for the 10,000 parts that they can configure it in the cluster level. And each namespace level also they can configure it to give a multi-tenant way of like a, some, some namespace we need a more level and then some namespace we need a restricted level, we can configure it. Then there is another special use case like a, if you are integrating Argo workflow with the external system like a database or some other API server which need like a rate limiting. So, we implemented the semaphore and mutex to control the concurrency in that uh, container level. So this way we, can, we are able to achieve like uh, the batch processing scalability. And we used that this, all the features in that uh, our platform to achieve that uh, batch processing platform requirement to support like uh, 10,000 concurrent workflows in our clusters. Let's give back to Rakesh to demo the platform. Thank you, guys. Um, in the next slides, we'll uh, quickly uh, uh, look at the, the visual aspects of what we were talking about. Um, um, I think that will paint a better picture. Um, so we talked about um, having um, so two abstracts um, for the platforms uh, <clears throat> that are integrating the engineering. Uh, so we uh, have an internal workflow in our, into a developer portal where users can uh, build a data processor. Um, so a data processor, like I mentioned earlier, um, is an Intuit artifact, uh, uh, a code uh, that can be run in the compute layer of your choice. These are reusable artifacts that can be uh, scheduled um, in multiple different pipelines. These are shareable processors. So uh, for example, in this uh, slide, you could see that like a processor that is being built um, this is of runtime Spark. Um, it's a language uh, that the user has chosen is Python. And uh, right out of the box, uh, the pipeline management layer uh, builds up the, uh, the repositories uh, for the users to get started, uh, the, the CI CD, and also the artifact reintegration. So the, uh, the platform users can just focus on primarily writing code and uh, uh, not the uh, uh, other aspects. Um, 
So the next step, like once a user uh, registers a processor, they could create a data pipeline, which is the compute and the orchestration layer, where uh, they could uh, specify the artifact, uh, they could stack uh, multiple processor artifacts and uh, have the pipeline set up. Um, and you could specify uh, the scheduling uh, and uh, so in the scheduling, um, like we discussed earlier, using the Argo events, we are able to support resource-based scheduling and time-based scheduling. So in this example, um, uh, the pipeline has to run every day at um, uh, 3 a.m. Uh, on completion of um, this upstream data pipeline and on completion of uh, this resource. So on meeting this condition, um, the pipeline will automatically uh, schedule. So this um, is how we have decoupled um, the, the dependency management between um, organizational-wide organizational uh, data pipelines. So once the pipeline is created, um, we provide um, the, uh, the dashboards for managing your clusters, um, your observability, um, Splunk dashboards, cost management, and um, Spark history server in this example because it's a Spark pipeline for data processing, and we also provide the execution history. So all this is a layer of uh, a layer that's built on top of um, the the Kubernetes uh, clusters we manage for the compute and the uh, the clusters we manage for the uh, Argo orchestration. Um, so in the next slide, I just wanted to uh, quickly give a viewpoint of like um, the the capability and what it enables the uh, the engineering platforms to do. So this is an example of a cluster uh, created uh, for one specific customer uh, within Intuit uh, uh, using the data platform. So you could see uh, multiple different DAGs being constructed and like there's multiple complicated clusters uh, which are interconnected uh, through the dependency management and also the uh, the compute orchestration that we provide. Um, we'll uh, quickly uh, wrap the presentation uh, by talking about what's next. Um, so we are currently working on a next-gen Argo event sensor, um, like we mentioned in the previous slide. Um, so this is the, the next scalability journey uh, that we are currently uh, ongoing. Um, so we are, we are decoupling the sensor compute and the manifest management um, to reuse a single uh, uh, sensor uh, for managing all your uh, dependencies. So, and we are also working on uh, a next-gen uh, multi-cluster uh, workflow uh, for supporting uh, uh, cluster load balancing through the workflow controller, which Bala will uh, talk, uh, give a few words about. Yeah. So, based on that. Hello. So this is the one of the top demand in that open source supporting like a multi-cluster workflow. Still we are evaluating how we can natively support the multi-cluster load balancing for the Argo workflow controller. I think the yesterday maintenance notes I mentioned that we are targeting for 3.6 feature, but still we are looking for the community to give the, their use case and everything to understand better for that the common requirement for the multi-cluster workflow. That's it. Uh, do you guys have any questions? For the uh, orchestration service, how does it work uh, to like distribute different uh, workflows to different clusters? Are you storing like the kube configs within the orchestration service, or is it like an event-based? So basically, the, the orchestration service acts like the, all the A Argo API service are registered into that, so that it w it's not going with the kube, kube config; it's going with the Argo server being, and uh, it's it has a memory of like a how many workflows are running on that each clusters, so that based on that it will ro load balance it, based on the configuration. Yeah? So does it dynamically decide which cluster to download? So does it dynamically determine which cluster to schedule the workflow based on the number of workflows that are in, in, the, in each cluster, or, or does it? It's more dynamic. Okay. So still we are working on that to support like more use cases. So currently, the master orchestration service will have like all the registered clusters, and based on those registration, it will repeatedly schedule it in the own problem. And it will keep track of like how many workflows are running that because there is a 
feedback loop through that Argo workflow for Argo event, which will tell it back, okay, this workflow is done, you can start the downstream workflow. Okay, but I, I, I think the question is, how do you determine which workflow should run in which cluster? Currently? It's done through a round robin fashion. Okay. Yeah. No, but currently we don't have any specific, uh, this workflow need to work on the, this cluster. We don't have that kind of specific, because all the workflow can run on the, all the clusters. So with, when it comes to um, the Kubernetes clusters that we manage, so one of the, um, the key challenges uh, with uh, running uh, Orgo workflows in scale um, is um, pod management. So uh, we um, run our, all our Kubernetes clusters in um, AWS accounts, and there is IP limitations uh, on like how many uh, pods that can come up um, with low latency on uh, a specific cluster. So the need for load balancing between multi-clusters um, comes from that basis. So currently, um, the BPP's orchestration service is uh, performing this uh, load balancing through the feedback loop uh, with um, the Argo events in Kafka. Um, but we are natively looking to support this capability um, in the, uh, the workflow controller um, so that this could be uh, managed uh, more natively. Hey, uh, question about the cluster size and number of clusters you guys are running. Uh, how did you tune or determine maximum cluster and how many clusters are you sort of running this workflows on? Um, so currently, uh, per cluster, um, we are um, targeting uh, around um, 10,000 um, active workflows. Um, so because our pod usage per workflow is around um, two, three pods, um, so that's around 30,000 uh, IPs. Um, and um, uh, the concurrent uh, workflows that we support per cluster um, is around 3,000. So we, uh, for supporting 10,000 concurrent workflows, we are uh, running on uh, three uh, Kubernetes clusters that is dedicated um, for the orchestration. So we have a separate compute clusters for running our spark processing jobs and other container applications. And so, uh, we are um, running out of time. Yeah. Oh, no, I have a couple questions from the virtual audience. Okay. Um, is your experience for large batch jobs, is it preferable to have many small workflows or a small number of very large workflows? Um, so in, uh, so small number of uh, workflows means that like, there, there is a high amount of resource utilization. So if uh, we are able to optimize for a pod usage um, per workflow, uh, you could run um, as many workflows as you can. Uh, but we are usually optimizing towards um, larger workflows um, so that like, uh, the resources are shared more optimally. Okay, another question quickly. Um, does your UI allow you to define relationships between workflows? If so, if so, how does it know that your output of one compatible with the input of another? Um, so the compatibility in our case um, is specifically tied with data uh, because we are talking about data pipelines. So the workflow integration are uh, done through um, the events um, infrastructure. Um, so the, the Argo events uh, track um, the workflow uh, state change. And uh, using the state change events, we emit it to Kafka. From there, uh, we do downstream invocations on other uh, data pipelines. So completion of uh, a workflow, which in our case, a data pipeline, we assume the availability of data, um, so and the downstreams usually um, that are relying on the data gets triggered immediately uh, based on the conditions. But we do support complex conditioning using the Argo events. Okay. Because Argo event will support like a, Argo event will support that my complex dependency logics. So based on that, if the one pipeline is depends on the multiple pipelines, we can configure it in the Argo event side. Okay, we need to wrap up. There are a couple more questions on here. Speakers, would you be, be able to go into the platform later and answer those questions for them? Sure. Okay, Yeah, great. so we will be in our Thank Intuit's you. booth. So you guys can come meet us and like uh, shoot us our questions. We'll talk more in depth on the architecture and also any other help that you guys need. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you.